In the foothills of the Hindu Kush, two of Pakistan's hottest actors go through their paces for the next Bollywood-style blockbuster. Abbas Khan and his female lead Megha used to make 20 films a year for Pakistan's northwestern tribal belt. There's an emphasis on action, romance and, of course, the all-important dance scene. But these people are now in the sights of the Pakistani Taliban. Syed Urfan is the film's writer. He believes his industry is under direct threat because such brazen contact between man and woman and even the actual filming of their image is condemned by Islamic extremists. Films like this are normally shot in the beautiful Swat Valley. But veteran director Ajab Ghul says Taliban threats have forced them out and now nowhere is really safe. Ghul is not imagining the dangers. The Taliban is so enraged by these scenes, they have started taking direct action. On May 22nd, they blew up the main cinema in Peshawar, the capital of Northwest Frontier Province. Ten died, 65 were wounded, and no one goes to the movies anymore. I'm told that many actors have now left the profession or fled, or suffered an even worse fate. <laughs> Mohammed Hussein is an actor whose actress friend was singled out. She was beheaded at a major intersection. Hussein fled the Swat Valley to come to the Pashtun Film Studios here in Lahore where today directors and actors are having a crisis meeting about the Taliban threats. Even here, 400 kilometres from Swat, they don't feel safe. Outside, I find a crowd gathering to protest against another Taliban attack. Two days earlier, 17 were killed when Taliban suicide bombers tried to blow up the headquarters of military intelligence, the ISI. For years, the ISI has supported Islamic militants, but it's now under attack by the Taliban, which thinks Pakistan's army has become America's puppet. Secular Pakistanis are increasingly angry and afraid. If the government of Pakistan give the weapons to the everybody, citizen of Pakistan, 
to training cities of the Pakistan, cooperate to the cities of Pakistan, then we will be killed the Taliban in the Pakistan. Right, so you think everybody should be given a yeah. weapon? Yeah, to yeah. Fight. But that's, yes. that's civil war. Uh, no civil war. Two members of a new local extremist group were later arrested. Police say this bombing proves the Taliban is forming deadly new alliances with militant extremists across Pakistan. It's a view shared by Pakistan's leading author on the extremist threat, Ahmed Rashid. We have the Pakistani Taliban. They, they lead an alliance of some 40 groups. Now, these include not only Pashtun tribesmen who've been helping Al-Qaeda and helping the Afghan Taliban, but they include Punjabi groups um, from Lahore and from other places in Punjab who've been fighting in Kashmir. So that is why the idea of the Talibanization of the whole of Pakistan is perhaps, you know, not only very dangerous, of course, but also perhaps um, uh, uh, more closer to reality uh, than uh, the situation in Afghanistan. I head northwest to Islamabad, Pakistan's capital, much closer to the Taliban's mountain strongholds. I find a city that feels under siege. Most intersections and every major institution are heavily guarded. At the city's main public university, physics professor Purvez Hudboy is collecting year-end exam papers from his students. He's worried by signs of increasing Islamic fundamentalism. There is a an enormous increase in conservatism, social conservatism, and you can see that in the way that students in this university, other universities, even schools, how they dress, how they speak, the kinds of books they read, their knowledge about the outside world. Religious symbols are much more on display, that people pray a lot more than they used to, go to mosques much more often, and this wasn't so earlier on. Professor Hoodboy says 80% of Pakistanis would support the introduction of Sharia law, and he fears the country could succumb to a Taliban takeover. Basically, if there is a charismatic leader, he could be clever enough to slough over these differences and, and weld together a fighting force that uh, could bring down any secular government such as the one we have now. Two months ago, Taliban fighters advanced to within 100 kilometres of Islamabad. The ongoing threat of Taliban attack ties up thousands of police and soldiers who must remain on high alert throughout the day. But the real danger of attack now comes increasingly at night. We just heard there's been a suicide bombing in the middle of Islamabad. It's now 9 o'clock at night. There's apparently one dead and three injured, but it was a very big blast. The problem is that the uh, terrorists often use one blast and then a second blast. There's just now a big crowd gathering in front of us. We'll go and have a look. Yes, sir. The police are nervous and try to force the people back. Okay, okay, please, please, back, back, back. The Taliban is creating fear by striking when and where it wants. This is exactly what the Pakistani Taliban have been threatening. Ever since the government's offensive into the northwest frontier, they've been saying they're going to send more suicide bombers into the major cities. And here we are tonight, a suicide bomber attacking a police station here in the middle of the capital, Islamabad. Pakistan's security services are on the back foot, constantly responding to the waves of attacks launched by Taliban leaders. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is a Taliban propaganda video made just two months ago and obtained by Dateline. It contains interviews with a series of young boys. All of them are suicide bombers, trained and sent to their deaths by the Pakistani Taliban. <laughs> Dwama Habaradatu, 
से पिताजी तो दूता है मुसलमान तरह पर यू एट में प्लांट है ऐसा यम ब्रिक कुफार सर कैसम कैसम वास ले दी आवास लिया मुसलमान सर नष्ट था मुसलमान सर सिर्फ यू पिताजी तो आपको क्या मत पर तुम दास पर घोड़े शनसी कि तू यम तू यम उपादला वेल ना वो खस्त ला These suicide attacks have been stepped up ever since the army launched an offensive against the Taliban here in the Swat Valley. A local cameraman working for Dateline filmed these scenes as the army moved into the Swat Valley capital of Mingora. The attackers forced the Taliban out of here for now, but up to three million men, women and children have been forced from their homes. Thousands are in camps, but most are seeking shelter wherever they can. I find some of them on the outskirts of Islamabad. Abdul Rashid is a government judicial official. I'm surprised to hear that many supported the Taliban because their brand of Islamic law was better than what many see as the government's slow and failing justice system. Do people in SWAT support what the Taliban was actually standing for? The SWAT Taliban was a very good sport. The Islam was a very good sport. The Quran 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 was a very good sport. Rayat Umar Khan shows me around. His charity is the only support for 600 families, almost 4,000 people. He takes me to a widow whose two daughters are so troubled they barely move from under these blankets. They have the vacant stare of the traumatized. In another room, I'm shown an 85-year-old woman with untreated throat cancer. The young mothers cower in shame with their babies. 33 relatives are living in this cramped, dirty enclosure. Many of these people have lost loved ones, been forced from their homes and farms, and are getting no help from the government. No wonder they're angry. <laughs> Such miserable conditions are fertile ground for extremists. To find out what a Talibanized Pakistan might look like, you only have to travel two hours from Islamabad to Peshawar, the capital of the northwest frontier province. The first thing I notice is the large number of women wearing the full burqa, a sign of Talibanization. The Taliban are here and seem to operate at will. Foreigners are targets for killing or kidnapping. So just behind me, just on the right hand side here is the old market in the central part of Peshawar. Just less than two weeks ago there were two bombs that went off in here killing 11 people. At the same time, there was a suicide attack just on the other side of town, uh, killing three people. And today, just about an hour ago, an IED, a roadside bomb, blew up a police car, killing one officer. This city is very dangerous right now and remains so, despite the fact that the government is on a full offensive not so far from here. Can I, can I hear a call? Hello. These are busy days for Saifullah Ghul. What's your name? How are you? The Peshawar news editor of Dunya TV 
he sends reporters daily into an increasingly deadly conflict. The other rocket attacks, rocket. rockets, and mortar, mortar shells, rockets, and mortars into the city also from from the into the Peshawar city. He tells me 11 journalists have been killed in recent months and shows me how much of Peshawar the Taliban now controls. This, uh, this lower part of the, I would say, that's uh, towards uh, the Khyber region, so this is a uh, yeah. major no-go area. And again, this part of uh, uh, the city, because again, it goes into the uh, tribal area. Uh, this is in the evening, that uh, when the uh, darkness falls. Again, uh, this part, we say that it's again a no-go area. Of, uh, he tells me the government has virtually surrendered the outskirts as it tries to protect the centre. You can say so that during the night or at the night time, the city is almost under siege of uh, these people, but not almost siege, but surrounded. That very evening, the inner security cordon is spectacularly breached. Peshawar's only five-star hotel is attacked by Taliban suicide bombers using a truck full of explosives. 17 people, including two foreign UN workers, are killed and more than 60 people wounded. Just blocks away from the bomb site, I find these boys. They're orphans from the Swat Valley. Some lost their parents in the fighting between the Taliban and the army. The orphanage manager, Arbab Kashif, worries about the impact of indiscriminate military force in the valley these boys used to call home. Because if you want to kill one Talib or ten Talibans for that, you have to bomber uh, the whole area. And I've heard many cases uh, in this uh, province where um, the local person uh, his father was killed in that, uh, that attack and that boy went to the other group. Went to, he, what, what yeah, group? to the Taliban? To the Taliban and that boy became a Talib as well. When these, these children came to us, uh, mo most of the children were pro-Talib. They, like, they were in favor of Taliban. They were singing songs of Talibans. Abab works to remove the pro-Taliban sentiment from these boys. He says he tries to explain that the whippings, violence, killing and beheadings used by the Taliban are wrong and says most of the boys now understand. But their experiences leave deep scars and room for future doubt. This is Imran, he's six. He's saying that uh, his four or five sisters died actually in that um, attack which was carried out by the uh, Pakistan army chopper. His father actually lost his sight uh, in that attack and uh, his mother is almost paralyzed in, in that attack. So, huh? He doesn't like Taliban. For now, little Imran is safe from extremist views. But despite their re-education, many of the older boys still seem to harbour support for what the Taliban stood for in their valley. Uh, the good things they, that they do, we appreciate. What good things? What good things? Hmm? Thing? I think that in early days there were a lot of crimes. You know, but no, but no, when they came, so they, so I think that uh, they finished all the uh, all the crimes. And these are the fighters that once inspired those orphans, the Pakistani Taliban. Filmed just two months ago for their own propaganda video, they have not been seen in these numbers before. The army claims it's killed 1,200 militants in SWAT, but many thousands more, including some top commanders, are believed to have escaped and joined the main body of the Pakistani Taliban here in Waziristan, where the army has just launched a new offensive against them. 
One of the top three Taliban leaders in Waziristan is this man, Mulvi Umar. Umar's message is a declaration of war against the government, not just in these mountains, but in all of Pakistan. उन्होंने जो जालिमाना कार्रवाई की जो आशिया ने बमबार हो रहा है तो इसलिए जो हुकूमती अहलकार है जो हुक्मरान है हमारी टारगेट इन शाह वही होगी इससे रिले रहे हमारे जो कबाइल मरते हैं खुवान बच्चे मरते हैं वो लोग तो पत्थर से तो पैदा नहीं है वो लोग भी इंतकाम लेंगे वो किस से लेंगे वो इन हुक्मरानों से लेंगे इन्हों की जो सरजमीन है उन्हों की जो बाई इलाके हैं इन शाह हम इनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई करेंगे अगर लोगों ने ये जुलम बंद नहीं की for Professor Hoodboy, the growing Taliban power has an even more alarming side. He's teaching the next generation of nuclear physicists and is concerned that Pakistan's nuclear material could one day fall into the wrong hands, a concern shared in the West. Well, there are radical elements within the huge bomb establishment and it's a pretty big establishment. There a few thousand people in it. There are some who um, are known to be very religious and um, perhaps radically religious. Pakistan has more than 100 nuclear weapons and is making another six weapons every year in a nuclear arms race with its rival India. To keep them secure, the army insists it has a multi-layered, foolproof system, but Professor Hoodboy is not convinced. I'm sure they've also spent a lot of money in perimeter fencing and um, arming guards and so forth. But uh, the problem is that nuclear weapons are inherently unsafe, and especially when you have an insurgency and you have um, people within the country who think very differently from the government and perhaps even people within the military who think differently from the leadership. That's where I think the possibilities of danger lie. Uh, the weapons are only as safe as the army is united. If this threat of Talibanization increases, um, certainly there is sympathy for the Taliban inside the army. Um, so it's very important that the army takes a position now against Talibanization within its own ranks and within society in general. One, two, three, four. Despite the dangers, many in Pakistan are bravely trying to continue their normal lives. <laughs> We are facing such a problem, but uh, uh, we are very much hopeful that our government will overcome this problem very soon. And uh, we always pray to God that all get well soon, very soon. But it's not clear how long these symbols of a moderate, secular Pakistan can withstand the rising extremism.